let's just be real. The 2018 Mac Mini plus a GeForce RTX 2080, that seems like a very odd couple. And it is, but if you already own a 2018 Mac Mini and you don't want to buy a dedicated gaming machine, then this combination is pretty interesting. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, so let's get started. Here is the GeForce RTX 2080 from EVGA. Special shout out to our friends over at EVGA for providing this card for testing purposes. Appreciate that. And you can see I got a little bit ahead of myself there. Already had the card taken out of the box because I was just so excited to try this out. All right, so this card has three DisplayPort connections here. You have an HDMI connection and a USB Type-C port as well. So plenty of IO there. Here's the rear of the card, the back plate. Here's the top of the card. So we're going to pair this EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 with the Mac Mini. We're gonna join them together and make this thing work in a Windows environment. But first, we need to place the card in an external graphics chassis with Thunderbolt 3. And I chose the Razer Core X because it's actually large enough to accommodate the three slot wide RTX 2080. Actually, it's not really large enough, but it's forgiving enough. I guess I should say that. It's forgiving enough to where it can fit inside okay and I can still access the IO. So there we go. All of the other external graphics chassis that I currently have access to, the Akidio Node Pro, the Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box, would not accommodate this card at all. So something to keep in mind for sure. Like I said, it is a tight fit, but as you can see, you can still access all the pertinent I.O. on the rear of the card. So let's set the eGPU setup aside and talk about the Mac Mini and the display connection. So I have the LG Ultra Wide 5K 2K display connected directly to the Mac Mini with an HDMI cable. You need to do this, you need to bypass that eGPU because Mac OS Mojave does not support NVIDIA GPUs at all. So you won't even be able to see your Mac's display if you try to connect through that eGPU. So you need a direct connection from your Mac Mini. The next step is to install Windows 10 on your Mac Mini using our Windows 10 Bootcamp tutorial. And you can find that linked here, and you can also find a link down below in the description. But this tutorial walks you through step-by-step step everything you need to do to get Windows 10 running on your Mac Mini. Now, I will say that Apple does not officially support eGPUs in Windows Boot Camp environments. But what we found is that eGPUs work really well in Boot Camp on a 2018 Mac Mini. Of course, Apple could change this at any time at their own discretion. But why use an eGPU anyway? Why not just use the graphics card inside the Mac Mini? Well, here's why. Yeah, it's horrible, that's why. The graphics card, the integrated graphics inside the 2018 Mac Mini is absolutely pathetic. And that's the reason you're going to definitely need an eGPU if you wanna do any sort of Windows gaming on your Mac Mini because it's using the Intel UHD Graphics 630 integrated GPU, which is just absolutely abysmal in performance. But that's why I was so high on the 2018 Mac Mini in our review because of the Thunderbolt 3 IO. It allows you to connect with a single cable to an external graphics chassis like the Razer Core X with that RTX 2080 and bypass that horrible integrated GPU. So you can have much better performance by connecting to an external graphics box like this with a single cable, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna fire it up. There we go. And now we'll see that blue light from the GPU inside the chassis. Let's get an up close and personal look at it. There we go, the EVGA GeForce, I wanna say GTX, RTX 2080 inside there, looking nice. All right, so, Windows automatically recognizes that we've connected a new display adapter. It's gonna go through, it's gonna to try to install all the drivers, grab all the drivers, download those. So what we can do, we can go to device manager and open up Windows Update and you can actually see where it's detected the NVIDIA GPU inside and it's downloading the necessary display drivers there. Now we're still gonna to need to go out and download the updated drivers from NVIDIA's website, but you can just let Windows do its thing here. And you can see it's already detected. If you look at Device Manager, NVIDIA GeForce 
RTX 2080. Now it's gonna ask us to restart, but what I like to do is I like to just shut down and then disconnect the HDMI cable and connect the display port cable to the eGPU setup. And then we're gonna connect the display port cable to our display, remove the HDMI cable. So again, we're bypassing the Mac Mini's integrated graphics and using the external graphics. So we need to change our display to display port for the input. And there we go, now we're good to go. Now it's time to boot up our Mac Mini powered by that NVIDIA RTX 2080 GPU. So let's see what happens. This display is a little, little finicky at times, but I find if I wait a second, there, there we go. Oh, well, almost there. There we go. All right, so here we are with our Mac Mini driven by that RTX 2080 eGPU setup. Now we, of course, want to verify that that is the case. I would hope so since we disconnected that HDMI cable, but here we go, just to make us feel good, we have that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 under device manager, no exclamation points or question marks or any of that. Now we wanna go out to NVIDIA's website, download the latest driver, so we're gonna select GeForce, the RTX 20 series, and then we have the, we don't have that TI, I wish we had that TI, but we have the 2080, so we're gonna search for it, download it. All right, and I'll speed through this portion of the tutorial because, you know, obviously it takes a while to download things and install drivers and stuff like that. So I'm going to show it to you, but obviously we have sped this up quite a bit to get through it as quickly as possible. All right, so now I'm going to choose NVIDIA graphics driver, it did detect the GPU. So I'm going to select express in the next. All right, so now I'm really gonna speed this up because I'm tired of waiting and you guys probably are as well. So, it is done. All right, so now I've restarted and here we are and immediately you can tell there's a huge difference in performance just by looking at the frame rate of this Heaven benchmark. Not only that, but it's running at 3440 by 1440, so much higher than the initial resolution that I had it set at and it's still getting close to 90 frames per second on average with ultra quality, moderate tessellation and two times anti-aliasing. Similar performance can be noted on the Unigen Valley benchmark as well. We're using ultra quality settings in 3440 by 1440 resolution. And you can see it's super smooth, 92 frames per second on average. So this is painting a pretty good picture of what games may be like once we start running them on this externally souped up 2018 Mac Mini that would otherwise not even be able to even step in the direction of this type of performance without that external GPU. Now here's another potential problem. This Mac Mini doesn't have a lot of storage space. So what I've done is I've connected this one terabyte SSD that actually has faster storage via Thunderbolt 3 than the internal storage in the Mac Mini. Now this machine has four Thunderbolt 3 ports with two ports per Thunderbolt 3 bus. So you have bus zero, these two ports on the left, and bus one, the two ports on the right. So you wanna make sure you don't connect to the same bus that your eGPU is connected to. So I wanna use those right two ports when connecting this external storage. That's gonna provide you with the best performance in the least amount of potential issues. All right, so we have that external storage connected. Like I said, this external SSD is actually faster than the base amount of storage inside the 2018 Mac Mini, which is only 128 gigabytes, so not enough space to store large games and things of that nature, especially when you consider that you already have Mac OS installed there. So what I'm doing here in Steam, you can actually set your library to use an external drive and I'm using that one terabyte SSD that we just connected. So that's where I'm saving all of my game downloads and I make sure that I have fast performance for those. Now I'm also connecting an Xbox controller, Xbox wireless controller. So you just turn that on, you click add device and then click allow and it's paired like that. Super simple, super easy. So what do we have now? We have a bona fide Windows gaming machine just like that. So. Let's go ahead and test Rocket League first because we're running this at 5120 by 2160 native resolution of this LG ultra wide 5K 2K display. Yes, again, 
We're running this game at 5120 by 2160 with the highest settings, and you can see it's silky smooth. Now I'm not naive, I know Rocket League isn't exactly the most demanding gaming title out there, but the sheer amount of resolution is nonetheless impressive when you consider the frame rate that you're getting at the ultra or the highest settings with Rocket League here. So I was super impressed by that. I don't know about you guys, what do you guys think? Thumbs up if you're impressed as well. But let's talk about a more demanding title like Forza Horizon 4. This is running at 3440 by 1440 ultra settings and you can see it plays pretty well. It's not perfect, but it's definitely playable and would only get better as you drop the resolution down a little bit. But even with such a high resolution and even with those high settings configured, the game as you can see is still very, very much playable. And I was impressed by this. I don't know about you guys, but I was impressed. Again, this is a Mac Mini, a 2018 Mac Mini. And you can see 60 frames per second. And it's hovering around mid 50s to 60, somewhere around that range. You can see here the results, 54 frames per second average, pretty good considering the configuration. Now, here is Project Cars 2, a title known for being ridiculously demanding. Definitely not as smooth, but still playable. 3440 by 1440 at high settings. You'd have to play around with the settings here to get this just right. And then last but not least, you have Ark. And this title was without a doubt the most challenging to get working smoothly while still looking okay. Probably would have benefited to drop the settings down one more notch or drop the resolution to make it a little bit smoother. But nonetheless, I was impressed by the Mac Mini's performance. So we'll conclude with this. Echoing my sentiments in my Mac Mini review, this is the most versatile Mac that Apple has in its repertoire. It is not a gaming machine, let's be clear, but it can perform as a Windows gaming machine and a very competent one, as you saw. To be clear, I would not buy a 2018 Mac Mini solely with gaming in mind. However, if you already own a 2018 Mac Mini for Mac OS and you wanna get more out of it, then why not? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.